of side opposition gave us a very odd caricature of the United States as an Orwellian state, where every single person is under 24 hour surveillance and the slightest act of wrong against the government can lead to you put, be, put behind bars. We tell that this is simply not the case by a simple reality check in that people in America are still free to do whatever they want, they are still free to pursue their interests as long as they don't openly jeopardize the lives of their fellow Americans. Before we move on to my contention, a couple of things about opposition. Firstly, they draw my first speaker's argument about how the nature of terrorism today is constantly evolving and the whole idea of an asymmetry of information to the point where prism is necessary to close the gap between terrorists and the effectiveness of terrorists and the effectiveness of governments. They also dropped the idea that my first speaker presented about the social contract, where some people trade certain, where citizens trade certain rights for the protection of other rights, such as, for example, in this case, trading privacy from being traded up, for, for, such as, for example, trading, uh, trading privacy from being blown up by war. Lastly, they also didn't deal with the idea about how PRISM paradoxically actually reduces fear, as now with PRISM as a safeguard, people are now people are now assured that now terrorist groups are under constant surveillance and that anybody who tries to do something wrong will be caught. So before we want to my constructive case proper, a couple of points of contention. Firstly, what exactly is PRISM? Secondly, does PRISM really create distrust as set opposition caricature? And lastly, on the whole idea, what rights? And are they really important when we put them next to the lives of other people? So to the first point, right? PRISM. The first thing they brought to us is that PRISM has a propensity for error. Yes, we deal that this is endemic for any security system at hand. However, the thing about PRISM is that it has a very nuanced check of regulations, such as, for example, FISA, such as, for example, congressional inquiries, such as, for example, the Supreme Court. Hence, we tell that the propensity for error under PRISM is much less, and hence we tell that it's still a bad solution. Even then, even if you only catch one terrorist out of 100, we tell you it's still good. Because for every terrorist we catch, we ensure that lives are protected, we ensure that another child's life is safe, who just happened to be hugging the teddy bear, which turned out to be a bomb. We tell that even if we catch a, a, even if we catch a large minority of people, even if we only catch one out of a thousand, it's still good because we're protecting people's lives, which is what a government's role is to do to protect people. So to the second point, right, about distrust. The first thing they brought to us was that distrust is created between the government and the people. No, right? We tell that by virtue of the fact that the government has reviewed PRISM, it already implies a sort of trust between the government and the people for the government to have actually reviewed this data to the people in the first place. Secondly, even if there was, even if there was really distrust, as my first speaker had already presented, and another argument which they dropped, we don't see how legislation such as the Patriot Act was passed in the very first place if people in America are really as distrusting of the government as side opposition, as, as side opposition said. So the, then they brought this whole idea about how the terms in PRISM are, are ambiguous, about how search terms are ambiguous, and hence can somehow further reinforce distrust as any average Jew on the street can somehow be caught, right? No, we tell that this is clearly not the case. There's clearly a set of differentiating factors between an, an average everyday person who respects the law and somebody who wants to blow up the Empire State Building. We tell that there are very clear sets of terms which differentiate terrorists from civilians this is why PRISM has more in the examples that my first speaker has raised, examples which side opposition has never taken down. The last point they brought was that PRISM is harmful as it defines people as a mathematical equation. Hang on, that's what any sort of governmental policy does. For example, measuring interest rates on tax collection is also regarding every individual as a statistic on a paper. Measuring population census also involves the same thing, but even if the government does that, if someone doesn't dehumanize the government simply because they rely on data, because it is this data that allows them to do their job the best, we tell that this simply does not happen. The last, time, the last point they brought to us is about the right to privacy. The first thing they brought to us was that the right, the right to privacy was sacred and beyond reproach, for, for which uh, my, I might point out, they haven't provided any logic or substantial analysis to back the claim. But never mind, they agree that the right to privacy is important, but the right to privacy is important insofar as it protects other people. For instance, we sacrifice the right to speech, or in this case for hate speech, if it harms other people. In the, very same case, in the very same case, we are free to infringe on the right to privacy if it means protecting the right to life of other citizens, which we argue is a much more important right than the right to privacy. This is why, for example, even if in America people are not voting their governments, the people don't, re don't decide, for example, interest rates or foreign policy or troop deployments because there's limits to these rights and there's, and there's limits insofar as it harms other people, insofar as it harms national security. The last point they brought to us, the, the, this point they retreated to, was that this is about American values. Hang on, this is not just about America. This is a global system. PRISM is used by almost every country and every police force because the data made is made public to America's allies. Hence, if you were to argue this topic, you also have to nuance this argument as to how it benefits the 
international sphere of cooperation, how it benefits other countries as well. So this is where I transition very, very nicely to a substantive, right, about, on how the usage of PRISM by the NSA enhances international cooperation and hence should be continued despite this reaction. So the premise of my argument is very simple, right, that achieving collective trust and cooperation is very, very important. This is because in the 21st century, states have to collaborate with each other to solve mutual problems. The mutual problems such as terrorism, not, for example, the government trying to actively prosecute against its own people. For example, the war on terror, a mutual threat to a lot of countries, is a global effort, not just by the government of the USA alone, but rather, for example, the governments of Pakistan, Yemen, and Afghanistan and as well. Hence, this requires a certain sharing of information between nations. It requires a certain degree of cooperation. This is arguably much more important than public reaction, as by not achieving international cooperation, you harm your own country on the geopolitical scene. As its relations with other countries and the way your country is able to play a part in the global scene, hold on a minute, man, is seriously jeopardized. Yes? Are uh, you able to prove that was, there was actually a distribution and honesty between the foreign allies? Yes, which is what I'll be going on to prove in my substantive later on today, but I'll flag it up for you when I reach that point. So, why is PRISM an international program, right? PRISM is used by countries such as the Five Eyes Alliance, which is the UK, USA, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada. This is further seen throughout countries under this alliance and countries with other agreements with the US cooperate by allowing their internet and data companies to be open to revealing information. For example, Israel in the 2003 Supreme Court ruling enabled Israeli ISPs and internet companies to receive and accept requests from the NSA to share certain data to PRISM. With this in mind, with the fact that PRISM is an international program and not just restricted to the US, there are three main reasons as to how this embodies international cooperation. Firstly, the very nature of PRISM, which is to fight crime and terrorism in the 21st century, already signifies a global effort against a collective harm. In this case, PRISM helps to fight against crime, it helps to fight against terrorism by collecting data on terrorists and terrorist websites, for example. The second point is that PRISM is a centralised data collection program. This functionally embodies international cooperation as well, as now nations can access data without, for example, political barriers or the rating of bureaucracy and can selectively access data, which is important then, if it's important to them. Lastly, PRISM symbolically embodies international cooperation as well, as it represents nations agreeing to share information and agreeing to allow an international program to operate within their own territory and to share data with other countries. This sends the message that in the 21st century, countries are willing to work together and cooperate with each other when it comes to tackling the most serious of problems which tackle our, which harm our society, which harm our people. So in conclusion, right, um, so back to my rebuttals as a whole, the duty of the government is not necessary to protect privacy. The duty of the government is to protect the lives of its individual citizens on the most visceral level to ensure that they won't get blown up the very next day in their train or in their car. And as long as, I, and as, long as we achieve that, as long as we provide a way for the government to ensure that terrorist threats are muted, to ensure that we reduce the chances of terrorist threats even by this much, we are very proud to stand for PRISM. We are very proud to propose. Okay, now we call upon the second opposition speaker. Security. 
prison. That's how you've been like explaining the whole situation. You're saying that prison is the only thing preventing terrorists from uh, acting uh, terror or from ter terrifying the population. That is not true because so many uh, no, thank you. So many countries do not have prison and they are doing really well. And the most developed countries do not, for example, Scandinavia do not have prison, but and they are doing very well. It is true that the U.S. is more threatened by uh, terrorists. But nowadays, uh, this, we're discussing this motion despite the disclosure of public. That is a really important point now. Now everyone in the world knows about prison, or let's be more logical, most of the people know about prison. And that's why there have been so many demonstrations and chaos in the world. That is really important because terrorists, I mean, if you are a terrorist, you're not going to do something, you're not going to be, okay, the government is going to catch me if I choose this way, which is prison then I will choose it. Of course not. The terrorists want to achieve their goals. That's why they're not going to use the most uh, way that uh, will not make them achieve their goals. And that's what's happening in the world right now. And that's why prison, as you said, it's, it's helping international cooperation. It is not. The biggest problem we have nowadays with terrorism is ISIS. ISIS is not being fought with the prison because prison cannot do that. Because ISIS, they're not using the American oh, networks uh, no, thank you. Uh, the websites that are uh, surveilled by prison, and that's why prison is not as effective. It is true that it can be effective for some stupid terrorists who didn't know about prison and used it. No, thank you. But I will discuss that more. Um, Secondly, you're talking about the international stability and how this will allow international stability. I want to just inform you that prison is not uh, like other mass surveillance programs. Prison is only used within the U.S. Yes, U.S. is cooperating with other other countries to make international stability, but that's using other mass surveillance, uh, mass surveillance programs. That can be uh, not good, the mass surveillance, and it can be good as you want to say, but we are now discussing only precisely prison, how prison has been affected. So prison is not affected in these ways, because prison is only mass surveillance within the U.S. So uh, let me go to my uh, point. The, um, that's, that's how ineffective prison is. So people, terrorists, are not going to be using these ways to be caught by the government because they're not that stupid and they are usually in a big cell that know and consider this information. Secondly, uh, I'm going to discuss the negative outcomes of prison. So uh, most of the time, the government, or according to us, the U.S. government is corrupt, but according to you, it's not. We will discuss that later. But yeah. first of all, let us let us look at the scenario where the government is corrupt. So the government, the U.S. government, has to fulfill a responsibility towards people to give them security. That's right, and that's and that's why uh, they want to catch uh, criminals, domestic domestic criminals that you have not been discussing uh, uh, as quickly as possible. So, for example, if uh, let, let me give you an example, if I am uh, living in a street and uh, my neighbor got killed, so the government will come. No, thank you. The government will come and uh, bring all the people who had uh, relations with that neighbor, and you're going to be in. And that happens a lot. You know, crimes happens a lot in the U.S., and that's so more likely to happen. With with many people, so you are once in a time in a court, and when you are in a court, and then uh, court, then they look at your data. Okay, probably they're gonna filter your data and look at what you've been doing. Probably you've been calling that neighbor and having arguments with them. Now, if they don't find the criminal, they have to show that they are a good government and find the criminal. So they will catch the one with most possibility have been, for have been a criminal. Uh, what's the second? But pr probably this person is totally innocent and now he is a prisoner just because of prison. Yes. Prism is only one in the toolbox of measures that the government can use to catch a terrorist. A government will only catch the terrorist if there's further concrete evidence. Please respond to that. Yeah, well, I'm telling you the case, no, that's not, that's not true, because the case mostly is when the government is corrupt and have all these people who are uh, probably the ones who killed that person, and then when you filter their data and you see one of them had, maybe no one of them was the, was the one killing that person, but when they filter the data and they see that there was some problems, maybe normal problems between one person of the ones they have and the one killed, they will catch that person because they want to say that we are uh, a government given, uh, given uh, security to the people and that's not good either because uh, the uh, criminal is going to be out and the, they didn't afford that security. 
Now, let me go to my second argument. How, uh, in, the, in the case you're describing, when the government is really uncorrupt, is really nice, is really friendly, they filter the data and look at it once, which is not the case, because every system has flaws. Now, in this uh, situation, uh, psycholo psychological studies have shown that people act differently when they're watched. So, for example, if someone is just sitting alone and they know they're not watched, they can do whatever they, they want. They can dance, they can laugh, they can, I don't know, pick up their nose or whatever. But when they watch, they, they behave differently. That's what psychological studies have come to. And that's a good point because considering that everyone now in the world using internet and using uh, uh, things that can be filtered and that can be uh, seen by a prison, people will uh, have, where, uh, people's freedom will be eliminated because people will not behave as, uh, as uh, they, they want to behave because they know they are watched. And uh, let me, yeah, it is true that you can say uh, this government do not care about what you're doing, but this, uh, for example, let us take an example. Now, uh, there are so many people who have guilty pleasure. So people who do not, who have secrets, and that's everyone in the population. Everyone has secrets who, do, do they, who they do not want to share with others. So for example, if I have a secret, and I want to tell, if someone is gay, and I want to tell his friend on Skype, only that friend, not another one, he would be afraid, because he would think that maybe he's, uh, I don't know, maybe he's someone he knows is a national security agency employee. And especially because NSA employees are secret, they, you don't know who, who exactly is watching you. So maybe it's your neighbor you don't want to tell the secrets uh, to. Maybe it's someone you really don't want to tell uh, that you're, you have, I don't know, sexual desire that you do on the uh, internet or something, you watch or something. You don't want to tell this neighbor or this people that you are doing them. But so now when you're just, when you just do that and you know that the NSA is watching you, you're going to be living like really uh, with eliminated freedom, with really decreased freedom because you will be afraid to tell people on internet when, when now the world of internet is very, very big. And that's how uh, prison uh, decreases the uh, freedom of having a, an identity, a, a privacy, and um, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. And that's how that's how uh, prison uh, in both both cases, when the government is corrupt and uncorrupt, is eliminating your, preventing you from having your freedom that the USA is so proud of. And